Sam Priestley makes a living by dressing up as a fireman, then taking his clothes off in front of women. Yep, he's a stripper. Hannah Priestley, Sam's wife, runs the business. And it's a very successful business at that. So much so that Sam works just one day per week and they both earn far more than they ever did in their previous full-time jobs. (laughs) Oh, and Sam's character's name? Fireman Sam, of course. It's the award-winning small business big marketing show thanks to American Express and Yellow. Yeah, I say, welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to your weekly dose of marketing madness. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner and you're ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. Today's 445th episode is made possible thanks to digital marketing agency Yellow. So if you're keen to get found online, and who isn't, then check out their full suite of products over at yellow.com.au. And we are also made possible thanks to our good friends at American Express. And you can see how your businesses could reward you by simply Googling Amex Business after this show. Hey, big show today. We chat to an entrepreneurial couple who've created a rock hard business entertaining women all over Australia. Another listener who's implemented a simple idea from this show wins big in the monster prize draw. And you'll get a sneak peek into a new segment starting in February. I think it'll make you go, wow. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Right, let's meet today's guests who I met at a recent event I was emceeing and I was quite impressed when I did meet them. Sam and Hannah Priestley run Men on Fire which is a fireman-themed hens party business that's developing quite a little following around Australia. And being the entrepreneurial couple they are, they were also recently featured on season four of Shark Tank in which they were seeking funding for a little invention called Boss Scoop. As usual, we cover plenty of ground in this chat, including how they surpassed their full-time incomes within six months of starting the business, how Hannah deals with her hubby taking his clothes off for other women, how they help prospects feel comfortable when inquiring about hiring a stripper, how they mastered Google AdWords and plenty, plenty more. I started off by asking Sam to share his most interesting hen's party moment. There's, there's probably two. There's one with a younger crowd and one with an older crowd. The most interesting and probably funniest one we did with the younger crowd, the party was at midday, which is normally a very a pretty tame kind of time slot. Yes. And we didn't really go and expecting very much at all. Thought it would be a nice, easy way to start the day. About 30 minutes into it, the bride was pouring $30 cocktails into her shoe <laughs> and proceeding to do shoeies all afternoon while <laughs> while being held by one of the other firemen. Of um, course. <laughs> she was interesting. And then she, uh, I offered her, she did the shoey. I said, do you want to wipe it out uh, before you put it back on? She said, no, nah, she'll be sweet. Yeah. No, she had about 12 more hours of partying with a wet shoe. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All class. So that's a good one. The other one was pretty wild. Was um, there was forty ladies, and they were all over the age of fifty. And yet, some of the things that they were saying, I won't, I won't repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, b- before we get stuck into how this business idea of Men on Fire came about, how do you manage this? Sam is your life partner. He's off taking his clothes off in front of women of all shapes and sizes and, inten- and intentions. You're, yeah. you're there running the business. How do you manage it emotionally? Uh, well, we get asked this a lot. Um, you know, every second person that we tell our, our business model to, they ask the same things. We've been together for a really long time and I think 
because we've been together for so long, we're very open and we talk about everything. There's no conversation we don't bring up and we have really, really strong communication. And I think that's what also makes our business relationship so strong as well. And I think I have this sort of, maybe it's an ego thing. I don't know. Maybe I have a bit of pride with sending my husband out and, you know, having all this great feedback, you know, they, they contact um, Hannah, the booking manager, and they say, oh, Fireman Sam was fantastic. They don't know we're married. We prefer to keep it sort of um, a bit more ambiguous. And they tell us all these stories about how well the night went and how fantastic and charismatic he was and all this kind of thing. And I think, oh, that's my husband. I love it. That's great. And yeah, I don't know. I think that those two things are, are really what um, that keep it going. And there's never a time where I'm uneasy or uncomfortable. I'm actually the opposite to an extreme. You know, I'm I'm proud, and I'm you know. Has there has there been a time when you felt uneasy or uncomfortable? Uh, I would say in the first year of business when there would just be sort of new things that would pop up that hadn't happened before that have now happened, you know, half a dozen times. Like, for example, people giving their numbers out or um, suggesting, oh, well, when you finish your night, come hang out, let's go to the nightclubs, let's do this, let's do that. And I I wouldn't say uncomfortable. I think it was more just an eye-opener as to how many people were throwing themselves at my husband. But um, (laughs) I think since then it's it's sort of turned into a real confidence you know every single party every Saturday night he comes home and we enjoy like laughing about the stories together and you know just sort of sharing that time oh that's awesome so so guys let's rewind Sam you were an engineer by trade and had a little bit small engineering business in your early 20s Hannah what were you doing before men on fire uh, I did a number of things. My first job out of uni, I'm, I did psychology and I worked as a behaviour therapist. So oh, there I, you go. Um, that explains everything yeah. why you guys are nailing it. <laughs> Gee whiz. You just had to tell me that. Yeah, there's a bit of insight <laughs> into maybe human behaviour and, and the way things sort of work and whatever. But, um, yeah, then I went from that into um, – I needed a break from therapy um, and I went into commercial abseiling. I cleaned high rises for a living. <laughs> <laughs> which was, yeah, a bit of a crazy time, it. but it was a yeah. good good break. It's what I needed. <laughs> that is a great story. What an incredible job. So here you are. You guys have been going out since you were 15. You get into your early 20s. You've clearly looked at each other one day and said, well, did you? Did someone suggest, why don't we start a hen's party business? Is that how it worked? Yeah, absolutely. It was around the time we were getting married ourselves and uh, I was planning my hens. I just came across everyone, I guess, who are now our competitors. And I really didn't feel great booking with any of them. So I ended up booking things myself. Um, We now operate as a booking agency as well. And I guess I was doing that for myself back then and just found that they weren't very helpful or didn't even, just the simple things, getting back to emails and phone calls a week later, you know, that's just far too late for someone trying to book things in. And um, Sam said, well, even if we just do it as a small thing on the side, why don't we just do it better? even if we kept it small. And obviously it's sort of built a lot more since then, but that's how it started. It sounds like you had a dream run right out of the gate. Six months after starting the business, you already exceeded your full-time employment income. So what do you think you really got right? What was your secret sauce in those early days? Well, it was a bit of a, there's a little bit extra before that, um, which is obviously the boring side that people sometimes don't want to hear about starting a business. Uh, We did start it with a business partnership. One of my close friends, we, we started the business together. we we both we were both actually married, and we thought, how can we do it differently? You know, all the other companies, when you book someone to come serve drinks, someone just turns up in suit pants, and there's not really anything. We found all this old gear on Gumtree and eBay and whatnot, and we picked up all these sets of gear for a few hundred bucks each, and we sort of thought, this is this is genius. We told a lot of people, we said, this is genius. It's going to work out. Every other company just did the same thing. They had yes. you can choose whatever uniform you want, whereas we were just fine. Fine and Sam, fine and Pete, fine and. <laughs> Mark. I was going to say Fireman Dick, but that would be so inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, yeah everyone's, everyone sort of said, this is a great idea. And for the first 12 months, it actually didn't go anywhere at all. I mean, all the marketing we did was through Instagram and social media, and we just didn't get anywhere. But then Hannah and I decided we we're going to take this a bit more seriously. And my business partner at the time, he had a, a government job and he was about to buy his second investment place. And he said, mate, I'm about to settle down and have a family. So if you want to buy me out of it, um, you can go full time and have a crack at it. And um, yeah, we, we parted on really good terms there. But um, I still thought there was potential. I thought I'll have a crack with using Google AdWords. 
from from then on, it was it just sort of skyrocketed from there. And about six months later, we hit six figures um, turnover, which was just pretty crazy. So, um, so Edwards was your Edwards was your secret sauce, Sam. Well, I think that's I think that's how we've managed to do pretty well. Is that when we started doing Google AdWords, we were the only people doing it really. So I mean, for wow. for about I think it was about fifty cents a click. Some of the returns were a thousand dollars. How long ago was this? So that would have been eighteen months ago now. Gee, you know, there there is a lot of variables in AdWords. Um, what what do you think? You know, you've got to get your headline right. You've got to get your link right. You've got to get your copy right. You've got to get the landing page right. Any particular tips there, Sam? I think the biggest thing that I've um, I've taught some other people as well is that you've got to have a high value product because if as the click the clicks don't stop going up in price. So now every all our competitors have, have gotten onto it and the cost of the clicks that used to cost me fifty cents are now costing me five or six dollars. So now it's not quite working out as well. So we've got another tactic we're implementing. Um, so we found the main thing was that. If your product's only, I mean, some products out there you might you might sell something for ten bucks. You can't possibly ever focus on AdWords where your click's going to be five dollars and it takes five clicks to get a sale. So I think the biggest thing with AdWords is having a high value product uh, to get the best return. But even at five or six bucks a click, if you're getting a thousand dollar booking, it really wouldn't matter if it was a hundred bucks a click, would it? Hello, Google. Yeah, definitely. But I think that's um, so. Now we've just gone more into the SEO side of things, so we always stay there. Um, which is what the other companies aren't doing that yet. So we're just staying ahead of them in that sense, not to give away too many of our secrets. So is that your focus? Is it because um, I interviewed a lady, Dana Tomasio, only a few weeks ago about SEO. She's one of the leading local marketing SEO experts in the world. And, um, you know, we were both talking about paid, you know, cost per click advertising, but really your SEO stuff, you get those foundational things right on your website and you're giving yourself a pretty good chance of being found organically. Actually, all our big booking numbers were coming from the ones that we were organically rate, ranking in the top three spots. So the AdWords was still working on a small scale, but we thought, hey, if we've got some some random sort of outlying um, suburbs and stuff outside Sydney, for example, that we do rank number one or two for, and we absolutely kill it there. So we get some very big uh, value bookings down there. So we thought, hey, if we can just spend some money and time and, and get it organically in Sydney and, and Perth and Gold Coast, then it should be, fingers crossed, recipe for even more success. Do you create specific landing pages for each of your ad campaigns? Yeah, definitely. So our, the website kind of got away from me a little bit and got into a bit of a mess because I was using Google AdWords and creating specific landing pages for each of my campaigns. But what was resulting was actually quite confusing to navigate around because I had so many pages and some of them yes. were quite similar and some were targeting competitors and so that was the first thing we actually did with our SEO company was sort of move away from that style of having this very specific – it's still quite specific landing pages but not overloaded with keywords and yeah, you got quite it. Yeah. nice. Yeah, consolidating the navigation bar as well just to make it much more user-friendly. I think also it, it grew bigger than we thought it did in a shorter amount of time. So we were – sometimes doing a bit of a catch-up because we were doing so well with advertising. Sam was just creating pages without then going back and looking at the overall experience of the website. It worked for a short while and then we just sort of changed it up and and made it a bit more user-friendly. Hannah, I imagine um, when women are calling you to book a hen's party, some of them, a lot of them, I don't know, would feel uncomfortable and not quite sure how to start the conversation. So what's your secret in helping them feel comfortable? I think making it much more relatable, having them realise that I I oversee all of the guys that work for us. Um, we've got 50 guys across the country and I keep tabs on all of them. I personally employ them myself. You know, we do even guys interstate. I do Skype interviews. I really make sure I get a feel for the kind of guy they are and I'd want to hang out with them, you know, for a party or a night out. If I can't have a good conversation with them, then there's no point. And I say this to the girls. I say they're not just gorgeous, you know, beautiful bodies and chiseled features, but they're there to make sure that, your party runs as best it can and that everyone that you invite to this party will feel special and feel, you know, that the it's the best night of their lives. Once I remind them of the way the party should run and I put those images in their mind of how smooth it'll run, even with this gorgeous guy that some, you know, some ladies might feel a bit prudish, um, and then they feel comfortable and they know that I'm on call. You know, all weekend they can call me anytime 
and I'm here to help. The marketing goodness you're listening to is made possible thanks to American Express. And if there was one card in their suite of cards that I'd love to draw your attention to, it's their Business Explorer credit card, which is a very, very sexy little beast. Here's why. It gives you up to 55 days interest-free on purchases. You earn up to two points for every dollar spent. You can receive 50,000 bonus points if you spend 100 k in the first 12 months. That's not possible for everyone, but maybe your business has that and many expenses go through. Complimentary travel insurance, you can receive a welcome bonus of 100,000 points if you apply by February 4, 2019 and spend $3,000 within three months of your approval date. That's a nice little card, isn't it? To find out more, simply Google Amex Business. Terms and conditions do apply. Check their website for details. Thanks to American Express and Yellow, we're chatting with Hannah and Sam Priestley, who are the owners of Men on Fire. I'll say an iconic Australian hens party business. How's that? You like that? <laughs> Listen, let's talk about um, difficult clients. I mean, I don't imagine it all goes smoothly. Do you get the odd complaint? And if you do, how do you handle them? What we found was funny is that we actually have a lot easier customers since we put our prices up. Uh, which uh, it might sound strange to some people, might might make sense to others. Yeah, it sounds counterintuitive. Often, when you charge more, people expect more. Yeah, I think I think our secret is that we do charge more, and then we still over deliver. So people are quite happy. I mean, some of our packages are even double what the market value is. When, when you say packages, Sam, I just want to be clear. You're talking about the. <laughs> Sorry, you, thanks, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> sneaky, Go on, Sam. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so, so like we, we put the prices up and we kept getting uh, – it did drop off the number of bookings we were getting, but we were actually still making more money. And then once sort of word of mouth, we did – we kind of like to combine how all that advertising works into sort of free stuff we do and whatever. And then once word gets around, we've kind of actually got even more bookings at a higher price, which, which somehow meant the customers – I think we've had one complaint in the entire – time that we've done it we've done close to thousands of parties now that's a pretty good track record what do you do about testimonials do you collect them or you don't bother yeah so we've got uh two things in there we've we always ask for feedback and then we do have a testimonials page on our website but other thing we do now is we um we really push in the google reviews because i've i personally use them a lot i recently bought a used car and i looked up the google reviews and that's what sold me on going with that company and I looked up some other Google reviews of other companies and they weren't very good. So yeah, I, we're very big on getting reviews and, and testimonials. That's a definitely a big thing. And then people can, they, they really go above and beyond. Some of the testimonials we have would be, one of them probably would be about a thousand words. She wrote us an essay about how amazing it was and everything and we'll just, we'll just blown away. How do you use those testimonials? Do you just rely on people finding them in Google or do you attach them to quotes yeah, so we, we send them out. We we absolutely drill them. So on the just just watch the language there, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anna. <laughs> so yeah, we, we we attach it in every every single email signature. We remind people as well once when they have inquired and they're just at that quotation sort of phase. Um, phase we will attach another thing at the bottom saying check out our Instagram and you'll see what your party's in for and read our testimonials. Then on every single page on our website as a link to our testimonials as well. Mm-hmm. So we really, really push it. Sam or Hannah, both of you, paint a picture of um, what it actually looks like when Fyme and Sam rolls up to a venue. Probably the biggest um, response I ever got was actually recently. I, we would do a bit of a, a signature thing where myself or whoever else is, is working will go into a venue and put the bride on their shoulder and walk out of the venue with them. So, and then whatever package they're going to, whatever they're going to. So they've been the rescued, or, basically. Got it. <laughs> Rescuing got them it. from a from a place. Yeah, we did it. one in a, in a Thai restaurant in the middle of Newtown. I think there would have been easily 300 people in this restaurant, and it just went absolutely crazy. <laughs> Everyone was screaming and cheering and filming, and then I've got branding all over me. So, uh, sure. What do you mean branding all over you? Men on fire branding? Yeah, it's original, legitimate fireman gear that's um, – We've obviously removed any official uh, user files kind of branding and we've put 
men on fire across the legs, the back, the front, you know, nice. all the kind of stuff we could um, find. So then as the guy's carrying the ladies out of the restaurant, um, it's actually really funny from when you're filming behind them and you can see the girl's face and the guy's back with men on fire all over it. <laughs> I love it. Love a bit of good branding. Do you sell any merch? The biggest thing we've done is we did a uh, rescue kitten charity calendar. Oh, yes. So all the all the boys donated their time. We had a big photo shoot back in June. And we actually we ended up raising a few thousand dollars for a kitten shelter, uh, mm-hmm. which worked really well. And that, so that was kind of something that we did, obviously, because obviously the farm and saving kittens is a, a great, easy marketing play. Um, and also we donated a few thousand dollars to a great cause. But also for us, I mean, we sold 400 calendars. So we've got 400 female workplaces across Australia now have our calendar nice. up on their staff room door. So, yeah, that's a big thing in free marketing and merchandise for us. Such a simple idea. Can you see the Men on Fire brand extending into other – would you do Women on Fire? Is there other brand extensions that you've considered? Oh, we've, we've got we've, a number of uh, plans in the pipeline, I'd say. I'm pretty excited to announce that Yellow are a major sponsor of this show, which makes a lot of sense given they're a leading digital marketing agency and this is the leading marketing podcast in Australia. So what is, who are Yellow? Good question. Well, besides it being a very yellowy colour and possibly Coldplay's best song ever, yellow.com.au offers a range of digital marketing products designed specifically for people like you. Small business owners on a budget who want to grow. Now, I'm talking about Australia's number one online directory. They can get you into that. They have affordable SEM, that is search engine marketing and search engine optimization packages. Plus, they design and build pretty nice websites. I totally get how tricky digital marketing can be. You know that. That's one of the reasons I do this show. So why not let Yellow take care of this side of things for you whilst you focus on what you're good at? Check them out, yellow.com.au or give them a buzz if you're in Australia, 132489 and tell them Timbo sent you. Hey, listen, you guys are quite entrepreneurial. Putting aside men on fire... You found yourself on Shark Tank with an idea called Boss Scoop. Explain that. Yes, so that was uh, something that took a lot longer than it, anyone would probably think it takes an idea to get to market. Um, there was about two or three years in the making and some prototyping and finally got an idea off the ground for that. That's a uh, scoop that's designed for the supplement industry so you can put your pre-workout powders and whatnot into it. A regular water bottle. It was strangely something that hadn't really been done before. Has it been a bit of a distraction, a bit of a bright, shiny object to men on fire and maybe you should focus on your core business? We actually quit our jobs primarily to focus on it. We're never going to commit to it as much as if we quit our jobs and there's suddenly no other income. Well, you're going to work pretty hard to make it work. So it was a bit slower. So that was when we thought, um, well, let's just have a crack and see if we can push men on fire a bit. And once we just got that marketing spot on, that's when Men on Fire took off and kind of distracted us a lot from the boss scoop, to be honest. Because you did get a couple of sharks interested, didn't you, our, our mutual friend Andrew Banks? And did Steve Baxter buy in? Yeah, so we, we got a deal on the show with both of them. But, yeah, unfortunately nothing really came to fruition with that. I think it was a bit of a mix of the idea was a bit too early. They kind of want to see that it is – already a big hit before they jump in. But I guess the reason we went on the show is because we wanted to get into America. We see that we've definitely had some good sales there, but the issue is we don't have any contacts or warehousing and it's going to cost a lot of money to set up something like that. So that's actually why we went on the show, but it didn't really go anywhere with, with those guys. Well, Sammy, you just keep focusing on taking your clothes off and Hannah, you just keep him <laughs> focusing on keeping him in orders probably. It sounds like you guys are, are smashing it, you know. That's probably I'm booking him out each be. weekend. <laughs> well, that's all you can ask for, right? Yeah. A, a husband that works one day a week and spends – what do you do the other six days, Sam? Well, I like to say one day a week, but unfortunately, when we first started, it was nice. We had you know, maybe five jobs every weekend, and I'd run around to four of them and have one bloke do the other one. But now we're up to – I think peak season, this is coming into 2019, probably looking at 
between 30 and 50 parties every weekend. So the bloody admin side of things took off a little bit more than we uh, <laughs> Oh, you poor thing. Uh, so you're working one and a half days a week now. Jeez, I'll have to let you go so you can get a nana nap. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thanks thanks for coming on the show and and sharing uh, sharing the men on fire story. I think it's a good one, one in the making. Uh, maybe I can get you back on in a couple of years' time and see where it's at. That'd be yeah, great. How can people find you? Uh, jump on busy into our Instagram, Men on Fire Australia, or simply Google Men on Fire Australia. Hannah, Sam, thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank you so you. much. Well, there you go, team, Sam and Hannah Priestley. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did bringing it to you. Be sure to hang around after my top three attention grabbers as another listener shares what marketing is working for their business. Plus, I've got a sneak peek of a new segment that launches very, very shortly. But first, my top three attention grabbers from that chat with Sam and Hannah, thanks to digital marketing agency Yellow and American Express. Attention grabber number one. I love the fact that Sam and Hannah communicate constantly and clearly to one another. Kind of important given the nature of their business, Uh, but I come across too many business owning partnerships where communication isn't primary and as a result, things get a bit testy. Excuse the pun. Uh, Attention grabber number two. (laughs) I love how they've taken a good look at their competitors and then identified what's being done poorly in the hen's party industry and gone about addressing it in their own business. So they're kind of at the top of their game. And attention grabber number three, I love the clarity they have around who does what in the business. Now again, you know, Hannah can't do what Sam does and I don't think Sam could probably do what Hannah does. So they're kind of forced to to have that clarity. But again, as a business owner, play to your strengths. You know that, right? You've listened to the show for long enough. That's what grabbed my attention. I would love to know what grabbed yours. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 445 and let me know. Now, guys, you would have heard me mention the fact that there is a new segment starting very soon. Well, it is actually starting next week. It's called WOW, and joining me in each segment from across the other side of the world in Los Angeles is past guest Steve Sims, who's on the other line. G'day, Simsy. Hey, how you doing, pal? I'm good, mate. I love having you back. And I know my listeners will also love having you back. You've been on the show twice. Just remind us, you run a business called The Bluefish. What is it? Uh, It's basically where rich people go to give themselves really cool cocktail stories. (laughs) (laughs) And I tell you what, I will put links in uh, the show notes for this episode because you reveal some of those cocktail stories in the interviews I've done with you. One of the things that you're really big in at Bluefish, and so am I, is wowing clients, right? What What is wowing? What do you love about it? Well, I think wow is the necessity. It's the lifeblood now. Uh, If someone can just turn up and purchase a walk away, then Amazon's just sitting there lurking, waiting to replace you. Wow is when there is an emotion created in the transaction, when it takes it outside of merely signing the check and creating an experience. And that's what I think we all need to be focusing on today. Couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, as I've said many times before on this show, there is we, we, everyone operates in an extremely competitive industry. There's no shortage of marketing blokes. There's no shortage of accountants. There's no shortage of plumbers. So what is going to set us apart these days? And wowing your clients is a major way of doing that, right? Oh, absolutely. There's there's always going to be competition, but the good thing about competition is it puts people's eyeballs out looking for the best. And the way that you're going to be the best is by standing out and creating wow. Great. So this segment, it's called Wow. Steve, you and I each week, month on, month off, are going to share one idea that listeners can use immediately to wow their clients, right? Oh, we're going we're gonna to do some nuggets. We're going to make you dangerous. <laughs> I love that. What a good outcome. I wish I'd thought of that. We are going to make you dangerous. <laughs> That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to have their competitors going, why weren't we doing that? Yeah, that's what you want. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> love it, buddy. And the important bit and what I love about you and what you do at the Bluefish is it's practical. It's real. There's no BS. This is how you do it. Go and apply it. No excuses, right? 
I've been doing it for years, doing it with uh, billionaires and zillionaires around the planet. If it works for me, then it sure as hell going to work for you. Brilliant, buddy. Steve Sims, that is him over there in the City of Angels. And starting next week, the first segment of WOW will appear. Can't wait, Simsy. See you soon, pal. Come on down. It's Timbo's Monster Prize Draw. Oh, yes, indeed, Lee Doodly. It is time to reward another motivated listener for taking action in the Monster Prize Draw. All you've got to do is email me uh, an idea that you've learned from listening to this show, how you've implemented it in your business, and what impact it has had on your beautiful business. And today's winner is... Anthony Spateri of video marketing agency Pixel 3. Here's what Anthony has to say. Hey, he says, howdy, Tim. G'day, Anthony. I've been after a good small business marketing podcast and glad to have come across yours. Thank you for the great shows. I've just finished listening to the Ethical Butcher episode. That was a good one. I like that. Uh, That was with uh, young Sam from memory. We've been running Pixel 3 video productions for over 10 years in Melbourne. Side note, well before Google pinched our name. Good luck trying to, you know, take them to court. And have recently started thinking seriously about how we document our systems and protocols. I've pretty much been in the business for all this time and now looking forward to the team taking over some important roles in the fast-growing production company of ours and allowing me to work on strategy. (laughs) How freeing does that feel, young Anthony? Hearing Sam discuss how they went about documenting their own systems and growing their business to six stores has given us a real surge of enthusiasm for getting it finally done. Brilliant. Love hearing that, Anthony. It's not always what you learn listening to a great podcast like yours, Timbo, but the inspiration it gives you is equally valuable and your show certainly did. So thanks, Tim. Regards, Anthony. I agree. You know, sometimes, you know, the topics may not be specifically relevant to your business, but the fact that you are consuming information that's motivating you and inspiring you to be a better business owner, that's a great thing. So Anthony, well done, mate, for listening and most importantly for implementing. As a result, you have won a pass to the American Express Lounge at Melbourne or Sydney International Airports. That's valued at 33 bucks. You've won a Basin Essentials pack from, say, a skincare. That's valued at 79 bucks. A Carmen's Muesli gift box, 60 bucks. A My DNA test kit valued at 99 bucks. You've got a bit of promotion on this show. Check out pixel3.com.au. There is a backlink that will appear on the Small Business Big Marketing website. Surely that's priceless. And you go into the prize draw to win big at the end of this year. The prize to be announced. That's it for the Monster Prize Draw for this week. Email me your idea that you've implemented from this show, tim at timreid.com.au. If I read it on air, you win. Well, that almost wraps up episode 445 of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, sponsored by American Express and Yellow. Search Amex Business after the show to find out how your business expenses can reward you and check out yellow.com. They're a digital marketing agency that's there to help small business owners just like you get found online and that has got to be a good thing. That'll take some pressure off. Hey, next week we go back into the archive and revisit one of my favourite episodes ever. Which one's that I hear you ask? Good question. Wait till next week. And we'll soon catch up with customer experience expert Amanda Stevens, who's going to explain how we can all be a little more epic in the way we love our beautiful customers Be excited, team. Be very excited. Don't forget there's an entire back catalogue of interviews over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. If you love the show, then let another business owner know about it by grabbing their phone and downloading it for them, hitting play, run away, do it to the next one. Until next week, I am Timbo Reid. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the absolute best marketing. Bye for now.